What down, family? It's your boy Street News TV. Back at y'all with another Chirac Street Legends. And this episode is going to be about none other than Dana Bostic, a.k.a. Bird. Dana Bostic comes from that new breed set, Triple L's, formerly known as the Black Gangsters. Now, the Black Gangsters were created by a guy that went by the name of Booney Black, AKA George Davis. Now the new breeds were initially part of that Black Gangster Disciple Alliance and Booney Black broke off and started his own thing, which was later renamed the new breeds. Now back around the time Bird was doing his thing, the new breeds controlled the 12 block area in West Garfield Park near Van Buren and Pulaski. At that time, the new breeds were beefing heavily with the Undertaker Vice Lords, but they also had beef with other sets. Members of Bostick's organization and the new breeds were regularly at war with other street gangs in the city of Chicago. Now, initially, Dana Bostick was second in command. He was being groomed by a guy that went by the name of Boudreaux or Dro. And this guy basically was like a father figure to Bird. He actually taught Bird a lot of the things that he knew. And this guy ended up getting killed. And once this guy ended up getting killed, that left room for Dana Bostic to fill that void. This guy was the connect. He was actually making a lot of moves when it came to the new breeds. This guy was a lot more into cocaine, the sale of crack. But what Dana Bostic did when he began to lead the organization, he switched straight to heroin because he seen that the heroin sales would be a lot more lucrative within their organization. And this is when he got deeper in with the Sinaloa cartel. At first, everything was running smooth within the new breed organization. Why? Because Dana Bostic was groomed by one of the guys from the old school. So he had a lot of old school ways and that's how he did things. Dana Bostic wasn't out there doing hand to hand sales in the streets. Dana Bostic was actually living in the suburbs and he was allowing his hierarchy to do the work for him. Dana Bostic had guys for everything. He had runners that would get the dope and run when they seen the police. He had guys that would actually do the hand-to-hand -hand sales. He had guys that would come and bring the dope and pick up the money. Only thing Dana Bostic had to do was stay in good graces with the connect. His street reputation rose to new heights after he allegedly walked up on some Undertaker Vice Lords sitting in their car and shot one of them and killed the other. Now, Dana Bostic was actually tried and convicted for this case, but he didn't do any time in prison because the witnesses on the case were very inconsistent with the things that they were saying. So the case ended up getting overturned and Dana Bostic ended up beating the case. This made him a larger than life figure. There was an altercation that took place between some of Dana Bostic's guys and former NBA player Tony Allen. Now this altercation took place at an all night barn grill called the White Palace is located on Canal in Roosevelt. During this altercation, someone was shot and a couple more people were hurt. And Tony Allen was actually charged with aggravated assault in which he later on beat. Tony Allen, who is also from the west side of Chicago, is said to have been linked with the enemies of the new breeds which were the Undertaker Vice Lords. Now, even though Tony Allen ended up beating the case, he was still sued by some of the new breeds that were present at the White Palace 
when the altercation occurred. Okay, now fast forward. There was another altercation that took place not long after the lawsuit was put on Tony Allen. This altercation took place at a club downtown. Now, Tony Allen was in town celebrating Antoine Walker's birthday. And he came across Dana Bostic's little brother, Curtis Ellis. And he went to confront Curtis Ellis in the bathroom. He thought that Curtis Ellis was one of the guys who filed a lawsuit against him, but it wasn't. So when he went to confront Curtis Ellis, Curtis Ellis punched him in the face. Now, after Curtis Ellis punched him in the face, Dana Bostic and Curtis left before anything can escalate. Soon after, they pulled into a rock and roll McDonald's. After they pulled into the rock and roll McDonald's, soon after that, Curtis Ellis was shot and killed, and Dana Bostic was shot five times. Now, Dana Bostic was able to actually drive himself to Strozier Hospital, where he was able to be treated for his wounds, and his little brother was pronounced dead on arrival. What this did was, it sparked the war even more. Allegedly, Dana Bostic told some of his guys in the hospital that he wanted 25 bodies for his brother's body. And the reason why he said he wanted 25 is because his brother was 25 years old when he died. Now, after this, bodies started piling up. Also, this was the incident that caused the police to start looking into Dana Bostic and his criminal activity a lot more. The police actually formulated a task force specifically for the new breeds called Operation Birdcage, in which the task was to lock up Dana Bostic and anybody associated with him by any means necessary. Now, of course, the investigation was now on. So the police began to get warrants for wiretaps and they began to go after the low level gang bangers, such as like the drug dealers and the runners and things of that nature. So slowly but surely, they began to round up the new breeds. And as they began to round up the new breeds and put pressure on them, guys began to talk. Ultimately, what was kind of the nail in the coffin for Dana Bostic, Dana Bostic was actually stopped for a DUI. At the time, he was on probation. So when he caught the DUI, it violated his probation. That sent him to Cook County for a while. While he was in Cook County, he continued to run his operation. And this is where the police ended up getting direct phone conversations from Dana Bostic to some of his dealers. And this is why they were able to go ahead and put the nail in the coffin. Now, Dana Bostic had a lot of guys that were within his organization that was telling on him. But it was one specific guy that he was real close to that told on him as well. And this guy's name was Maurice Davis, a.k.a. Capone. He told federal agents about, you know, a lot of the stuff that he had did for Dana Bostic. And he told federal agents about a lot of stuff that Dana Bostic had ordered others to do. And ultimately, he only received 20 years. Now, even though he told on Dana Bostic and a lot of others were telling on Dana Bostic, they couldn't really prove, you know, the murders and things of that nature. Dana Bostic actually confessed to being a part of or conspiring to sell heroin, but he didn't confess to the murders. So Dana Bostic ended up receiving 38 years. And if I'm not mistaken, he's set to be released in the year 2043. Now, 
What we can learn from Dana Bostic's situation is this. Everybody wants to be the man. But the thing about being the man is when the boat sinks, you the captain. So ain't no such thing as I didn't know this was going on or I'm not responsible for that. This is why Nino ended up flipping in the courtroom. Because everybody's not prepared to be the man, especially when you're dealing in illegal activities. When you are the man, you are subject to the worst penalty. They looking at it like you are the one that's calling the shots. And if you're the one calling the shots, you're the one that's responsible for everything that's going on. Another thing, this situation shows you that you cannot trust nobody when it comes to being in the streets, gang banging, being a part of a gang and all of that so-called gangster shit. This is the part that nobody never likes to talk about. What part is that? This is the part where your fucking homeboys tell on you. This is the part where your homeboys go to court and point you out. So they can get less times on a deal that they made with federal agents. This is the part right here. What happens to most people when they're in this situation? They do exactly what Maurice Davis did and the rest of the guys who told. They snitch. Nine times out of ten, they snitch. And in today's times, it's damn near ten times out of ten. When somebody's looking at 20, 25 30 to life, believe me, bro. Your head is definitely on the chopping block. This is what this lifestyle has come to. It's all a facade. They cannot take the pressure of being in jail for the rest of their life. This is the part that you never see until it's too late. So for all of y'all out there right now, listen carefully to what I'm saying. There will come a time when you're going to either have to tell, keep it real, or keep it real after someone tells on you. If you are part of this lifestyle, be prepared for it. When you in trial and you see your homie get up to get on the stand to testify against you. It's going to be too late then. Chicago, Illinois. I love y'all. It's been another one. It's your boy SNTV. I'm out. Just to be honest, I'm smoking on chronic by speaking the bonnets for Nessie 100. Focus on making some money. Get on the track and go dummy. Bitches to rap like a mummy. I'm a human tsunami. Shoot up your block with a tummy. As soon as they see me, they run it. Niggas, they know how I'm coming. Hop out the car and I'm dumping. Bagging and flipping, no fumble. Paper, I'm washing, no tumble. I'm so humble. I'm so ready to rumble. Swing at your face and you stumble. Nigga, I do what I want to. Just to be honest. Nigga, I do what I want to. Just to be honest. Just to be honest. Nigga, I do what I want to. Just to be honest. Just to be honest. Just to be honest.